again and again and again. An army's a waste of time for one like me. Ballista, your command. Armor monster. One bullet, I need. Give me a target. Abolista, your command. Left, right, left, right. Again and again and again. An army's a waste of time for one like me. Abolista, your command. I'm a monster. Left, right, left, right. One bolt. Yes.
I get across? Enough, chit chit. Draw your weapon. Quick and painful this'll be. I smell a leak. Tell me you jest. Nothing personal, I assure you. The chase is on! out one of your teeth.
The white of an eye from half a league away. Shit, there's in the lock. Okay. That must be the key.
What happened here? Sadly, it was Rayla who met with surprise. A hundred-yard gap gaped in the unbreachable walls of Rosberg. The fortress itself was aflame, spewing black smoke into the sky. I don't... How? It can't be! There was no time to consider her question, for Nilfgaardian scouts had spotted Meave's company. The Queen knew battle was inevitable, so she gave the signal to form a defensive line, then drew her blade. Your Grace, the Guardian fighters remain in the city. This could hurt. Of course, as you wish, Master. Bigger they are, easier they are to tug. Yep. Off to the front yet again. Bloody horses. They'll pay for this. The thing about slings, they hide well. Used to believe it, the king could not have died here.
to the front yet again. Ever have a storm knock out one of your teeth? Tell me you jest. Nothing personal, I assure you. Watch for Demoven's banners! If he's here, we must find him! The Lyrians met one note of luck in this song of woe. Rosberg had fallen, yes, but the Nilfgaardians, not expecting reinforcements from the south, had stationed only a small detachment to hold it. Meave led her men to victory and retook the fortress. Or rather, what was left of it. What they did not demolish during their assault the Nilf Guardians burnt once inside the city. Countless charred corpses of both defenders and peasants seeking shelter from the invaders lay among the blackened ruins. Some had tried to shield their children from the fire with their own bodies, to no avail. Gods be damned! The queen cried, pounding her fist against the wall. Meave was about to give the order to move on when she caught a stifled whimper coming from a pile of rubble. Her soldiers ran to the rescue, their bare hands digging through the fiery bricks. Here! He's alive! The man they pulled from the ruins had suffered horrible burns. His face was a stew of seared flesh and pus-filled boils, and he reeked of burnt meat. Seeing Black Rayla, the poor soul staggered to his feet and lifted a shaking hand in salute. Engineer, Lieutenant Xavier Lemons, reporting for duty. Medic! Send for a medic! Le lemons What the devil's happened? I... <clears throat> I know not. The East Tower, I led the defense. Heating oil to tan Nilfgaardian hides. <clears throat> the catapult struck. The cauldron tipped. <clears throat> burst into flames. The rest, I cannot say. The fortress fell. What was that? A 
Our preparations were perfect. A month, two we could have lasted, but traitors were among us. Elves, dwarves. Planted charges on the buttresses. An explosion shook the tower, a hole gaped in the wall. Our men threw themselves in, filling the breach. Vermin, filthy rotten vermin. I know you suffer, soldier. But Queen Meave wishes to meet with your sovereign, Demavend. We must know what's become of him. Gone, luckily. He oversaw the preparations and then returned to Aldersburg. Two, three days past. Then let us do the same. Reynard, prepare our departure. Hold your grace. Did... Did anyone survive? No. There were no other survivors. How could they? An entire detachment? An entire city? The animals. Soldier, my medics will tend to you as best they can. Then we can escort you home if... This is my home, Your Grace. Rosberg. I beg you, let me join your company. Let me exact revenge. I respect your fighting spirit, good man, but in your state... Your Grace, I can hold neither shield nor sword, but I can still fight in my own way. I'm an engineer. I build siege towers, but listen... Such pain, such ferocity resounded in Xavier's rasping, distorted voice that Meave could not refuse his plea. Once the medics had bandaged his wounds, Meave's men set out towards Aldersburg following Demavend and the Nilfgaardians. At one point in their journey, Black Raylor rode up next to Meave. The warrior's lips were a thin line, bitten to blood. Milady, the road to Aldersburg leads through Mulderwood, where Eldane Scoyatel prowl. Same filth who killed my men and delivered Rosberg to the Black Butchers. Rayla breathed deeply to steady her furious, shaking voice. Please, my lady, I ask you upon the holies, let us find them and destroy them. Meave gave a slight nod. It seemed the road to Aldersburg would prove long and full of challenges. Pity Willem is not with us. Were he to see what lies before our eyes, caught a whiff of the burnt bodies, perhaps he would see with whom he now consorts, whom he allowed in our home with nary a fight. If it be your majesty's wish, I shall send a rider to the prince with her. I wish nothing of the sort. I will not correspond with the enemy. What is over there? You get a fast travel point. Dwarves breach the walls, plowing traitors.
yeah. I remember this. Yes? This... Eldane. Could you tell me about him? He should hang. I'd hope to hear advice that will be useful to us in battle. Hmm. First of all, you can't rightly trust the bastard. He doesn't respect our laws, doesn't share our morals. The King once dispatched an envoy to Eldane, despite my advice to the contrary. Found the envoy the next day, eyes gouged out, shaft of his white flag jammed down his throat. So, diplomacy is clearly not the wisest course. But what of battle? What tactics does he employ? Like all elves, he's a worm. Avoids open confrontation, sets ambushes, attacks from the shadows, from midst the trees. It would be best to burn this whole forest to the ground, deprive him and his folk of cover, any place to hide. Sounds rather drastic. Like tossing the babe out with the bath. Believe me, they'd not hesitate to do the same to us. Not for a moment. Rayla, how are you holding up? Not certain I understand what you mean. <laughs> All Edurn is aflame. Nilfgaard's banners fly over its cities. Don't tell me you're not troubled. Of course I'm troubled. I stationed at Rosberg for five years. Knew all on the crew there by name. But that's war. That's its nature. No sense bemoaning it. I see. Just know if ever you wish to talk. I won't, but I do appreciate your concern, ma'am.
I must go. We'll speak later. Your Majesty, I've been meaning to thank you for allowing me to join your ranks. Certainly, Xavier. I welcome all foes of Nilfgaard to march beneath my banner. But what did the field surgeon say? Have you not resumed work too soon? I've strength enough to wield a hammer. Though my scars still burn, and fiercely so. My lady, I've seen folk turn and frown at the very sight of me. If my appearance disgusts you, I can... Nonsense. The North Guardians, not you, should be ashamed. You've no reason to hide, no reason to cower. Thank you, my lady. It means a great deal to hear that. You've long served in King Demoven's army, haven't you? Yes, Your Grace. Why enlist at all? What prompted you to do so? Hmm. The king needed engineers. I answered the call. Not terribly talkative, are you? I can build any bridge, any ballista, but to talk, well, it hurts to talk. I see. Well, do not worry. I prefer deeds to words, in myself and others. Other matters await my attention. We shall speak later. As you wish, my lady. Meave's ears caught the sound of a ruckus coming from the camp. Feet! Inglet! A pox upon you all! It was her quartermaster hurling oaths at the peasants she had freed from the Nilfgaardian slave convoy. A few had stolen supplies under the cover of darkness and escaped into the woods. Terror and dread gripped the other freed prisoners. Meave mulled over what to do with them, and Reynard, as always, offered some advice. It is high time they went off on their own, Your Grace. They are too great a hindrance. They slow our march, divert our soldiers from more important tasks. And now this. Gascon was listening to their conversation. Neve shot him a questioning look. I opposed taking them in. So, for consistency, I now oppose forcing them to leave. We made their miserable lives our responsibility, did we not? Well then, that is a burden we cannot simply shrug off. Let us not mince words. We cast off these peasants now, they shall die. Meave said in the end. Let them stay. But I want them watched. They cause any more trouble, military justice they shall face. Understood? The freed prisoners sighed with relief. The infantrymen assigned to watch over them, however, grumbled their disapproval of the Queen's decision. It is an army, not a shelter, they said. Me
Not liking the looks of this, Gascon said, furrowing his brow. Neve followed his gaze. Before them, beside the road, stood a hut with a scorched thatch roof. Why? Huts abandoned, yet dried fruit and mushrooms hang from the eaves. Famine raging all around and no one's been tempted. I'd send a scout if I were you. The Queen did as Gascon suggested, and sent three infantrymen to reconnoiter. They entered the hut and found only silence that was soon broken by a blood-curdling growl. The soldiers ran out at full speed, tripping over their own legs. Meave drew her sword, convinced a horde of Neckers or ghouls would soon attack. But her fears proved unfounded. Instead of monsters, out of the hut came a shaggy dog, a torn scrap of fabric clutched in its teeth. Milady, one of the soldiers began, his face red with embarrassment and his hands covering a hole in his breeches. Uh, was dark as a well inside, and that hound, he jumped out at us all of a sudden, biting it and snapping. Bad boy, Gascon said with a smile, then pulled a hunk of dried sausage from his bag. Bought by this generous offering, the dog calmed down at once. Further examination showed the dog was the hut's only resident. Like many others in Edirne, its owners had disappeared without a trace. Their loyal mutt still guarded the premises, waiting for his master's return. Let's take him with us, Gascon said. Otherwise, he'll die here, of his own hunger or someone else's. A watchful sentry like this could prove useful in our camp, said the Queen. Fine, he can join, but he shall need a name. How about Reynard? proposed Gascon, a cheeky grin smeared across his face. That way, he'll come when you call, sit on command and always be a heel. <clears throat> always heel, that is. Watch your words, said Reynard, hand tightly gripping the hilt of his sword. Or you'll learn a lot of dollars tame as you believe. Enough, both of you. That's an order. As for you... The Queen took a good look at the dog, who still had a scrap of fabric in his teeth. Since it seems you have a taste for the cloth of the nether regions, I dub you... Knickers. Will that do? The dog wagged its tail vigorously, as if thoroughly pleased with its new name. Meave's company marched off, a furry new recruit richer. Watch your heads! <laughs> Ooh. 
thing about slings, they hide well. I smell a leak. It's gonna be a right good levy, big and beautiful. about slings, they hide well. Stop your yapping and start digging. Leave this place at once. First to wander and shall remain here for all eternity. Holding. Okay. Probably gonna be an ambush here. And I don't know if I should... I should probably explore this area. Try to go explore this area next. Neve and her companions neared the Moulderwood, a dense, ancient forest of trees whose tangled branches had witnessed the conjunction of the spheres. It was not until King Vidimont's day that a road was finally carved through the primeval thicket, significantly shortening the journey from Rosberg to Aldersburg. Even when peace reigns, danger rules this road, Rayla said. Now, now no one dares travel it. At the edge of the wood, by the road, stood an enormous willow. Its branches swept down to cover its trunk, looking for all the world like long tresses shrouding a woman's face. Meave had an ill premonition. She did not like the sickly sweet aroma wafting from this tree. He drew aside the drooping branches and stumbled back. There were men bound to the tree, covered in sap oozing from gashes in its trunk. Its heavy scent had attracted swarms of insects, flies, wasps, bees and beetles. 
They seethed over the bound men, crawling in and out of their ears and nostrils. Eldane welcomes us to his wood, Raylo whispered. Neve stepped towards the tree and saw the men stuck to it were all still alive. Those the elves had caught recently writhed and howled for rescue. Those hanging longer merely followed the queen with half-crazed, bloodshot eyes. All day. Meave screamed to her dumbstruck Lyrians. Free them! At once! Her soldiers needed no more prompting and set about sawing at the ropes with their blades. As soon as they had freed the first captive, before even a word of thanks could be uttered, a flaming streak soared through the air and stuck in the tree. The oozing resin burst into flames, engulfing the prisoners as well as the soldiers who had come to their aid. Elder speech battle cries rang out from the woods as elven warriors launched their attack. Nilkaipsia! It's a trap! cried Raynor. Defend the Queen! in the fight! They'll seek to blind us with shock and awe! I smell a leak. Nay, do one they came est. storm is coming. Let's enjoy the weather while we still can. Bigger they are, easier they are to target.
What do you want of me? Everything all right? Her Majesty is exceptional. Death to old one! Thing about slings, they hide well. I'll feed you to the crows! The battle done, Neve surveyed the carnage, her breath still ragged. The thick stench of blood, sap, and ash she sucked in made her stomach churn and head swoon. The Scoyatel. I'd heard of their cruelty, but... The Queen said, sheathing her sword. But I... Never have I countenanced a thing like this. Black Rayler, who had just extracted her blade from between an elven gorilla's ribs, smiled darkly. Worst is yet to come, my lady. The Queen regrouped her forces and marched into the Moldwood. The Lyrians sang none of their usual marching songs. Instead, they walked in silence, eyes darting constantly to their flanks. Hear that? Nightingales. Unmindful of war, they sing on. Those are no birds, my lady. Just scoy. Lady Margarita told us of this.
Abolish to your command. Armor won't say. One bolt's all I need. Give me a time.
You mad? Don't shake that! Got business for me? Yeah. Bigger they are, easier they are to target. Discipline shall bring us victory! Now we will see who is weak! This could hurt! Thing about slings, they hide well. I shall not fail. None shall tread on us. Blood and neck ends. Similian Vart. Ever have a storm knock out one of your teeth? The storm is coming. Let's enjoy the weather while we still can. Coin never stinks, no matter how rank the pouch. Everything all right? Yeah. I bit the white of an eye from half a league away. Swords I smile at, weapons laugh to scorn.
On the edge of the Moulderwood, there stood a small village, Crumhorn. The hamlet was surrounded by a high palisade, while the villagers carried makeshift weapons, flails, axes, and nail-studded planks. Life as the Scoyatel's neighbors was clearly not easy. While her men rested, Meave approached two of the villagers. They lowered their heads in respect and fidgeted nervously with their shirt hems. My lady, reckon you ought to know. Elves meeting traders in the woods at night. Buy swords, herbs. Rayla, who had overheard the conversation, twisted her mouth in a hateful scowl. Hawkers stink worse than vermin. Willing to help murderers for coin. Please, milady, we must find them and punish them. You, talk. Where do these meetings take place? The peasants looked at each other. One scratched his head, the other towed the sand. Finally, one of them blurted out, Could tell you, milady, yes, but uh, only for gold. I see I'm dealing with shrewd men of trade. Fine. Your fee. Neve took a few coins from her pouch and tossed them on the ground. The peasants dropped on all fours and started snatching the coins from the grass, ignoring the contemptuous gaze of the Queen's soldiers. Them orcas wheel them goods to the old fishing hut north of here. Scoyatel come a-crawling from the woods, the first crow of the cockerel. The Queen told her men to prepare to fight the Scoyatel and their abettors. Black Rayler sat on a fallen trunk and sharpened her sword. Found human relayings below in a rather grisly state, I'm afraid. Some squirrel house soldiers meet the man in the dog lord. Ah! Tied him up and left him near Necker Nest. I've heard the elves often execute their captives in such a cruel manner. I wonder what he stole from them. Perhaps we'll find out. Yeah, perhaps we'll find out. Drive away any monster and search the body. Oh, and you another map. Wait, was, where was that rock? It's like a U turn, okay. Let me look at a map. <laughs> 